Hello, welcome to this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and sharing in this now moment with myself and with one another. If you have not seen these videos before, welcome and welcome back if you have. My intention is unity and oneness. This particular video, I would like to just kind of talk a little bit about karma. So everything I share is from my own perspective and my own journey and my own journeys. And I guess I'll talk a little bit about my journey in another video. In a nutshell, in this lifetime, I've experienced quite a lot of, uh, quite a few things, we'll say, quite a few life experiences that have brought me to this point. I've also lived quite a few lives, lifetimes, we'll say, on Earth before this. And I've been a healer the last 30 lives I've had, I've pretty much been a healer or a light worker. And one may say then, and I also have connections to all of my galactic brothers and sisters that I bring in, and also uh, in all of this, other versions of me as well that are higher dimensional, that have gone through this journey in a different way before. So I kind of just am throwing that out there. Now, that's all over the place and very multidimensional, but when I look at this and I say, okay, I had a crazy childhood growing up. I was born into a family that, you know, didn't work out, <laughs> right? Parents got divorced. How many of us come from a broken home and then had a crazy stepfather that moved in and that, um, that wasn't really a, a pleasant situation for me as a growing up as a child. I had a church that I went to that was extremely strict and I could tell details at some point but I had a myriad of health issues probably because of all the issues that I had growing up as a child as a young child and you know I could go on and on and on about that story and so the question then becomes did that happen because of karma was I karmically oh did I did I do something to my stepfather in the past that he would then want to come in and be abusive, right, in this lifetime? And we were balancing out some karmic obligations. And there are those that do believe that. And I would like to share that from one perspective, for other people, um, for, uh, for, for somebody else, that may be true. And that would be their truth. The other question is, well, if I came into this earth cycle 30 different times and I was a healer every single time, was it because I had some major karma because I was involved in the Orion Wars and maybe I was karmically obligated to repeat lifetime after lifetime after lifetime? So I'm just kind of throwing this out here to just get those, those, uh, feelings about this kind of flowing. I've never felt that way about myself, and I have been told that from several people who I admire greatly who are also clairvoyant, clairaudient, claircognizant, whatever we might want to call them, intuitives, and they have, we'll say, shown me different scenarios, and I now recognize that the reason I didn't feel that this was karmic for me was because it wasn't. I agreed to come in lifetime after lifetime based on my purpose to be a light worker, a healer, whatever it might be. And I carry all of that in this skin suit now and that's where, where I share these videos with you guys. Why am I sharing this? Obviously we're talking about karma. So if it wasn't karma, then what is it? And is it possible that not everybody has karma? Maybe because of my 30 lifetimes of do, being a healer, I paid off my karma. And if that was the case, then why was I born into this family, right? And I could go on and on with all of these questions. Why did I have this particular relationship? Why did this thing happen? And what my guides, my, what my highest aspect, what my galactic brothers and sisters and my ancestors share with me, aside from the fact that we also have agreements that we make to what one might call soul contracts. That's kind of a separate video, but that can also be tied in with karma. But that's not where I'm going with this. What if 
I did it or had this experience just to have this experience so that I could be of more service to my fellow brothers and sisters or so that I could as a being, as a source consciousness extension, experience these certain frequencies and do it from a place of neutrality so that all karma had nothing to do with it. I ask this question because I hear it a lot. People do uh, say to me, I've had this happen in sessions with other light workers who have reached out and contacted me and said, you know, I just, I have so much karma in my life that I just, I feel like I'm drowning in it, or I must have done something awful in a previous lifetime and that's why I'm where I'm at. And quite frequently, I don't see it that way. And I have seen it oftentimes, not to say that that isn't the truth in some circumstances, but most of the time, it has nothing to do with karma. It has to do with choices. It has to do with the choices that we make at any given moment based on the frequency, based on the space that we are in when we make those choices. And quite frequently, it's more of cause and effect. This is the effect that has happened caused by this particular action. And that's a very linear way of looking at it. That is not necessarily a multidimensional frequency of looking at it. Oftentimes we have relationships with certain people and it has nothing to do with the fact that we have some karmic tie or that we're stuck on a wheel. It's that we've made the same habitual patterns lifetime after lifetime after lifetime and we've carried over contracts. However, again, let's just delete the contracts for right now. And by the way, they can be deleted. <laughs> That's a whole other ball of wax. But let's pretend for a moment, what if karma had nothing to do with it? And I'm gonna go a little deeper in just a moment. What if soul contracts had nothing to do with it? The reason that things have happened in our lives. That would mean that the reason things have happened in our lives have been completely in our control and based on habit patterns that we have either learned from our parents or perhaps remembered from previous experiences. And that's one version of a truth, of a reality from a particular um, dimension or dimensional matrix that I'm offering in this now moment to share as a potential possibility of, hmm, that's something different to think about. I wanna go backwards and also share that there is karma involved for some people and it does happen that there's this loop that they get stuck in that has to do with soul contracts. But again, let's just kind of move that off to the side and save that for another time. To go a little deeper than that, and we can talk about uh, our responsibility and our actions and taking responsibility for our actions. Sometimes we're being invited to ask ourselves, um, are we blaming karma for our current set of circumstances? And that's a good question to ask. What if it had nothing to do with karma and it had to do with all of the choices that we made that brought us to this point? So that's something I wanted to throw into that mix. Moving on though, if karma is something that is created as cause and effect or karma is created because of something we chose and that created an energetic ripple that then caused down the road us to be obligated to this particular person or set of circumstances again to balance out this now ripple or imbalance, right? Then what? What is that? And then I am guided to share if karma is really just a balance of right and wrong or this action and causes this effect, what if there was already a balance? Then 
would karma even be something that existed? Because karma is about the balance, dark and light. You did this wrong, therefore this wrong is done to you. This person in a past life tortured you, now in this lifetime they get tortured, for example. If none of that existed, because everything was balanced within us, and I'm not going to talk about the collective and all of the things that are playing out in the collective. I would invite you just now to kind of go within and just review our own personal situation. And from one perspective, if we are creating from a place of compassion, neutrality, neutrality being the key, zero point, perhaps might be one linear term of, of calling it. We're in that space of just operating from our highest potential. Then technically, we're already balanced. Therefore, all the choices that we make moving forward are going to be balanced choices that will not create any more karma. Now, what about the past karma, though? However, if we are in a space of neutrality and zero point, and everything is happening now because there is no time, or past, present, future are all connected in zero point, because the pattern allows all of that to converge and be as one in unification in zero now moments, wouldn't that mean that we are therefore dissolving karmic past, karmic future, and karmic present situations because we have found that neutrality, which has a ripple effect and actually changes the frequency of our past experiences and relationships or frequencies existing between those relationships? I know I'm going really multidimensional here and kind of all over the place with but this is what I wanted to share because this is how I see it from, from my perspective. So the more we get into our heart, meaning not blissed out, although bliss is great. Bliss is not necessarily sunshine and rainbows. It's recognizing that we are not reacting to something. We are acting from a place of balance, a place of neutrality, a place of, um, I could say, almost an ex existential awareness. An awareness, we're able then to make choices. We're able then to ripple out into all versions and timelines of ourselves. And we're also, from another perspective I'll get to in just a moment, then affecting everything within that field. So, in theory, that karmic energy is then dissolved and allows us to integrate all of that to become a fuller, more expression or more expansive expression as deeper connections to source energy or realizations that were deeply connected to source energy or I could go on and on. And also moving from that, We've heard the idea that someone who's in a bad mood affects people around them. And it usually, I believe, according to heart coherence, goes out like three to five feet. But when we're in a space of high um, expansiveness, and guys, apologies if my film runs out, that ripples out as far as 15 feet. And if we're in our hearts and we're in coherence, neutrality, perhaps zero point at that, at that space, creating from that space as creators and masters of our reality, we affect so much more within our field that would possibly be considered a good deed, okay? This good deed, this energy of holding space and raising the frequency or allowing others to match that frequency, so to speak, then has an effect 
that affects so much more from there because that person will affect that next person that affects the next person that affects the next person. And so from that perspective, that's another way that that karmic belief structure or karmic obligation would balance out and be dissolved faster. And this is called bliss implosion in the blood, right? Our ability to reach that space the golden egg of spaciousness. And I'm not talking about space, like outer space, of course, existence. So that's it. I wanted to share that. I'm running out of room on the video, so I'm gonna end on that note, but it's just food for thought. Um, I could go on and on. So in a nutshell, or in an egg, to look at all of this, we're being invited to dissolve cords, uh, connections, and we do that by holding space, by feeling into a situation, by allowing others to be themselves, by allowing us to operate from a place of, compassion isn't even the right word because sometimes we tie compassion with the word empathy and that pulls us into other things. But I will use compassion because it could be a space of gratitude, perhaps, might even be better. Gratitude, but in a neutral way. And in this, we owe nothing. There is no, no, no thing to resolve or to dissolve because we are the oneness that is, that is affecting all things. Therefore, it is what it is, literally. Or we could say, I am that I am but it's beyond that. And so I just wanted to share in love and light. Um, if you're not sure how to, it, this, if you're watching this for the first time, heartmath.org. I talk a lot about bliss and coherence. I wrote about it years ago and didn't realize that's what I was writing about until later down the road, um, I had met a dear friend of mine, Kat, who introduced me to, to HeartMath. And also, um, since I've discovered Dan Winter, who is talks about the science behind heart math, one of I believe he's one of the founders. It's just about being in a space of joy, bliss, love, neutrality, and allowing things to unfold from that space allows us to stop creating from this cause and effect type reality. It allows us to make decisions that are based on the right angle, right? The right wave, as I believe it's called the long wave, instead of these choppy short waves that have up and down, up and down. It's long and smooth. We'll have a little high, we'll have a little low, we'll have a little high, but it's more, more of a conscious, space to be in, right? A higher state of consciousness, a higher awareness, a higher perception. And that changes the whole game. In love and light, namaste.